lift your hands. Let's glorify our risen Savior. Oh, wandering into the night. Oh, wanting a place to hide. This weary soul. This bag of bones. I tried with all my might. Oh, but I just can't win the fight. I'm slowly drifting. Oh, yes, a vagabond. Oh, and just when I ran out of road, I met a man I didn't know. He told me that I was not alone. choice but to believe my doubts are burning oh yes like ashes in the wind oh now so long to my old friends oh burden and bitterness you can just keep on moving nah. oh you ain't welcome here oh no from now till I streets ago oh i sing of how you save my soul this wayward son has found its way back home pick me up you turn me around oh you place my feet on solid ground i thank the master i thank the savior because he healed my Get up, get up, get up, oh, get up, get up, get up, oh, 
get up out of that grave. Oh, get up, get up, get up. Oh, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Oh, get up, get up, get up. Yeah, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave because you pick me up. You turn me around. You place my feet on solid ground. I think the master. Oh, I thank the Savior because you feel my heart. You change my name forever free. I'm not the same. I thank the Master. I thank the Savior. You pick because you pick me up. You turn me around. You place my feet on solid ground. I thank the Master. I thank the Savior because you heal my heart. You change my name. we do oh we got so much to be thankful for don't we friends yes hallelujah praise your name Jesus hallelujah we're coming to this place to worship the Lord this morning amen hallelujah I just wanted to say that we we tend to search the world and look for things to look for joy to look for pleasure to look for happiness. And uh, we're doing a class right now, Ecclesiastes, and it talks about how everything under the sun is the same. And, and at the end of the day, whatever pleasures you're looking for, you're not going to find it in money or in man. No. You're going to find it in Christ Jesus. Amen? Hallelujah. Amen. Let's lift our hands and let's worship the Lord this morning. And let this be our testimony. Hallelujah. Jesus, thank you, Lord. I search the world, but it couldn't fill me. Man's empty praise and treasures that fade are never enough. Mm. Then you came along. Yes, you did, God. Put me back together And every desire Is now satisfied Here in your love Oh, there's nothing Better than you, Lord There's nothing Listen to this part, and I'm not afraid to show you my weakness, my failures and flaws, Lord, you've seen them all, and you still call me friend, cause the God of what, cause the God of the mountain, is the God of the mountain.
us, Lord, to know that you turn mourning to dancing. So I'll sing. You turn graves into gardens. You turn bones into armies. You turn seas into highways. You're the only one who can. Hallelujah. You turn mourning to dancing.
heavens elsewhere. Oh, better is one. Better is a one day in your courts. Better is a one day in your house. Better is a one day in your courts and thousands elsewhere. We sing better. Better is a one day in your courts. Better is a one day in your house. Better is a one day in your courts and thousands elsewhere. A thousand tells way. Oh, yeah, it's better. Oh, better is a one day. Better is a one day. Better is a one day. A thousand tells way. Better is a one. Better is a one day. Better is a one day. Better is a one day. The thousands elsewhere, oh, sing that. Better is a one day, oh, better is a one day. Better is a one day. The thousands elsewhere, oh, better, better is a one day. Better is a one day. Better is a one day. The thousands elsewhere, one more time. Better is a one day. one day God in your courts that is one day in your house oh yes God what it's like being in God's house what it's like being in God's presence this psalm is this song is actually from Psalm 84 the writer writes, he starts the psalm this, he says, How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. My soul longs, yes, faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and flesh sing for joy to the living God. And as he continues, he talks about how blessed it is to be in the house of the Lord and how blessed it is to be under his protection. And then he closes the psalm with these words. He says, O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob, blessed, behold, our shield of God, O God, look on the face of your anointed. He says this, he says, for a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. He said, I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord than dwell in the tents of the wicked. He says, listen, I'd rather just be the lowest of lowest servants if I could just be in the house of the Lord versus sitting in luxury in the house of the wicked. He said, I'd rather be there. He says, for the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing. Listen to this. As we get ready to pray for needs, you need to hear this. He says, no good thing does he withhold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the one who trusts in you. One of the saddest statements I hear Christians often make is when they're going through something difficult, they say, I just needed to stay home so I could go through that. I want to challenge you today. Don't do that. Come to the house of the Lord. I'm not saying that because I'm a pastor and I just want to fill seats. I'm telling you that as a Christian who has gone through tough times, some of the best places I've ever been was in the house of the Lord where I could be with God's people, where I could hear God's name lifted high, where I could praise him and seek him. That's why we've been talking this whole series about a culture creation because it's got to be safe and loving because people come in here who are broken and hurting and they're going through things and they're looking at life and saying, I don't know where else to turn. I don't know what else to do. And I'm here to tell you, as one who was there, listen to me, this is where you need to be. You need to be in the house of the Lord saying, God, here I am. It's better to be here than anywhere else. 
because I'm here to tell you I've been everywhere else and there's nothing better than right here. There's nothing better than in his presence. So as we pray this morning, maybe you came in here with a burden. Maybe you came in here with a struggle in your heart. You are where you need to be this morning because God loves you and God cares about you. Don't get discouraged. God is faithful. He bestows favor and honor to those who walk uprightly. And here's the great part. We hear that and we say, well, pastor, that's not me. I'm not upright. I can't live that kind of life. Here's the great part. Because of Jesus Christ, he's given us his righteousness. So that when we come into the house of the Lord and we call on the name of Jesus, he hears us and he answers us. And so would you just sing us through that chorus a couple times? As we do, would you just prepare your hearts to receive from the Lord this morning? Just worship him for a moment. Maybe for you it's to confess that, Lord, I'm glad I'm here today. I'm glad I'm in your presence today. I'm glad I'm with God's people today. Let's worship him for a moment. Oh, better, better is a one day in your cause. Better is a one day Better is a one day in your course than thousands elsewhere. Better is a one, better is a one day in your course. Better is a one day in your house. Better is a one day in your course than thousands elsewhere. Better is a one day, better is a one day in your course. Better is a one day in your house. Better is a one day in your course. Thousands elsewhere, better is a one, better is a one day in your courts, better is a one day in your house, better is a one day in your courts, thousands elsewhere, one more time, better is a one day in your courts, better is a one day in your house, better is a one day in your courts, thousands elsewhere. Can we pray together this morning? Let's pray together. Lord, I love you. Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you for the chance to be in your presence. Thank you for welcoming us in. Thank you for your love and for your mercy, for your patience with us, for your grace that chases us over and over and over again. Thank you. Thank you that this is our safe place to come worship you. Thank you. I thank you for my church family who loves one another and truly just seeks you. Thank you. Lord, we are glad to be in your house today. We are glad to be in your presence today because we know that in your presence, you are our provider and you are our shield. But Lord, I'm asking you to be with people today. There are those in this room. There are those who are watching online. There are those who are on our prayer list, Lord, who are struggling and hurting. And they need a touch from you today. Maybe it took them everything they had just to come into your presence today. But Lord, touch them today. Touch them. This day is not about us. This day is about you. And it's about what you're trying to do in people's hearts and lives. And so, Lord... We open our life up to you. We want to see people saved, but Lord, I want to see people healed and whole today. I want to see your church people blessed today. I want to see your church people to experience your presence today in a way that they haven't experienced before. And so I'm asking you to touch each and every person that's here today, Lord. Bless them. Show them favor. Just be with them today, Lord. Because, Lord, we hunger for you. We thirst for you. Our, our soul cries out for you today. You are the best thing we've ever found. And you made the way for that to happen. So thank you. So I ask you to lift up people's hearts today. Lift up their lives. Bless them and strengthen them. Renew their strength. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon them. 
and bless them today because, Lord, they are your children and they are in your hands. And so I give them today to you. I commit every person that's here to you today. Do a work in their life. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being here. God is good, isn't he? Amen. God is good. You may be seated for just a moment. I'm going to ask our ushers to join us. We're going to continue to worship with our tithes and with our offerings today. As we do, I just want to thank you again for being with us. If you are new and you receive a welcome box, there's a connect card on it. We'd love for you to fill that out. If you would, you could fill that out and put it in the offering plate. If you don't have time to do that, that's okay. We'll collect it after service. There's boxes in the foyer. You can just drop those off in there. Listen to me. Those cards can also be used. They're in the back of, or the seat back in front of you. That's, whew, that was hard to say this morning. They're in the seat back in front of you. There's a connect card there. For you, you can use it as a prayer request. If you're going through something and you need prayer, I want you to know you're not alone. We're here for you. We love you. We pray for you. Every week in our staff meeting, we pray for you because I believe God wants to touch your life. And so if you're going through something and you have a need, fill it out. We'll pray for you. If you want to keep it private, give it to me after the end of service. I'll keep it private, but I want to pray with you because I believe prayer still works today. And I believe God still honors his word today. And he has promised that he would never leave us nor forsake us. And I believe that today. And so I want to encourage you to be with us in that. Pray for people. Submit your requests. We're here for you. Let's pray over our offering this morning as we get ready to receive it. Lord, thank you. Thank you for this congregation. I thank you for their faithfulness. I ask you to bless them and strengthen them. I ask you to use this offering for your glory. Lord, we've collected offerings for hurricane relief. We've collected offerings for missions and missionaries around the, this community, around the world. Lord, I pray, use, use this offering to expand your kingdom, that people would be saved, that Christians would grow in their faith because of the faithfulness of the Kimsville Church of God. Bless us today. Strengthen us today. We put our faith in you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Let's continue to worship this morning. And stand back up to your feet if you'd like. We've been talking about culture creation, right? And our theme song has been made for more. How many knows that each of us were made for more? Amen. So stand to your feet and worship. And sing it with us. Oh, I know who I am. Because I know who you are. The cross of salvation was only the start. Oh, yes. Now I am chosen, free and forgiven.
We believe that today. We believe we were made for more. We believe that you gave us a purpose. You placed a call on our life. I thank you for that, Lord. Thank you for the call on each person that's in this room and what you're doing in their lives. 
And so, Lord, we submit ourselves to you this morning. We give our lives to you. We give our hearts to you. We give you our future. And we give you our hopes and dreams. We love you and we praise you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you, praise team. Thank you for being a part of this worship service and being here with us. I'm glad you're with us today. I'm thankful that you're worshiping with us today. I am excited that you're part of our church family. It is fun every Sunday when we get to see you and smile with you and laugh with you and joke with you. It's so much fun. If this is your first Sunday with us, I want you to know you have found a good church family. So welcome, welcome. You're, you're where you need to be this morning. For the last few weeks, we've really been kind of looking at who we are as a church. It's not really a new direction for us, but we've been really looking at what are we here for? What are we doing? We've been calling it culture creation. It's been this series we've been in. Where we've been looking at who we are. And so we've given you a, an assessment, a spiritual assessment that you can fill out to know where you are. If you haven't done that, I would encourage you to keep doing that. We opened our cafe so that y'all can get to know each other. I'm here to tell you that was phenomenal today. We opened it last week. I think there are more people in the foyer this week than ever before. It was so much fun watching everybody get to know each other and talk to each other because we want to get to know one another. We want to know one another. We are a family, and we want to love one another and be with one another. We've got shirts available. If you didn't get a shirt yet, you're welcome to get them. They're in the uh, back corner of this sanctuary. There's a table with shirts. Just pick one up. Pick one up for you and your family. We'd love for you to take them and, and celebrate with us as we create a culture because here's what we know. We are a church on a mission, right? We want to be a church that is safe and loving. We want to be a place that is safe and loving. And how we're going to do that is by loving God and loving others. And we're doing it for a purpose. And that purpose is we want to see people saved. And we want to see people have spiritual growth in their life. That's why we're here. That's why we exist. We're not changing anything. But it's a call to action. It's a call to action for us as a church. But it really is a call to action for us individually. We have to become passionate about reaching the lost. Because here's what I know. If we don't go get them, how will they ever find us? If we won't go tell them what we found, how will they ever turn to Jesus? If they never hear somebody come alongside them and says, look at what he's done in me, he can do it in you, how will they ever know that there is hope for them in this world? And so we've got to be passionate and deliberate about reaching them. But we've got to be passionate and deliberate about helping one another grow spiritually and walk spiritually. It's one of the things I love about small groups. If you've been in our small groups, man, they've been phenomenal this session. They've been incredible. I've heard testimony after testimony after testimony from people who have talked with me and said, Pastor, I'm growing so much spiritually. Things are changing in my heart and changing in my life. And, man, my understanding is getting so much deeper. And, and it's great because we want to help people grow. We're we're not just here to just get people saved and pat them on the head and say, okay, sit here till Jesus comes back. No, we were made for more. We were made to be passionate. We were made to reach people. We were made to help one another grow. We were made to be there for each other. When we go through those tough seasons and those seasons when I don't feel like doing much of anything, but I come and my church family, my people surround me and worship with me and lift my arms for me when I'm too tired to, when I don't have the prayer left in me, they say, that's okay, we've got enough prayer for you today. We're going to pray for you. That's what it's all about, church, and that's why we've been talking about what we need to do. And so that first week we talked about why a safe and loving environment matters and being passionate and deliberate about this, that it has to be more than just this series. Listen, in two weeks we're going to take these shirts off, right, and they're going to become our car washing shirts and they're going to become our work around the house shirts, right? I mean, let's face it, it's going to, be, but we can't let this die with those shirts, right? This isn't just about a shirt and a series. This is about who we want to be and what we want God to do in us and how we want him to work in us in the long run. On how we're going to continue to do this and continue to be passionate because it really does matter that we do this. And so we talked and said if we're going to do that, if it's going to be part of who we are and so ingrained in us, then this has to become part of the culture of our church. And so we talked about what cultures do we need to create. And we've talked about prayer. Prayer has to be the foundation of everything. It just does. It has to be everything for us. 
We started a prayer team as part of this. During this season, we've started a prayer team to help in the altars. And i got to share with you, you see a baptistry over here. We're, we are doing baptisms today. We're going to baptize two people today. Isn't that exciting? But the first day the Baptist prayer team was up, somebody gave their heart to the Lord. And as soon as they gave their heart to the Lord, somebody came alongside and said, you know what you need to do now? You need to get baptized. And they said, okay. And they walked right to the back table and signed up to be baptized. They're going to be baptized today. And it happened because somebody came along and said, let me help you. Let me help you know what to do next. And so prayer is the foundation of everything we do. We have to pray for one another. We have to pray for this community. We have to get out and do that. We talked last week about an invite culture. We need to invite people to come and hear and see what the Lord does. I love what Philip told Nathaniel. Nathaniel had all the excuses in the world, and he said, just come and see. Come and see for yourself. And I'm here to tell you, if you don't know what to say to questions, there's your answer. Come and see. When you're inviting them to church and they're complaining about church, say, just come and see. When they're telling them about Jesus and they don't have the, the, they're fighting against it and they're saying, well, listen to this and this Christian that and this Christian that. And you say, just come and see. Come and meet my Jesus because there's something different about him. And so we have to keep inviting people. So this week we're going to continue by talking about stewardship. What does it mean to take care of what God has entrusted to us? What does it mean to be faithful with the things he's given to us? And I want us to talk about that today. I want us to define what stewardship is and why does it matter and what does it matter to our church? Why make this part of our culture? And I want to start by looking at what is stewardship. Oftentimes, and here's where we need to start, oftentimes we've linked tithing with stewardship. So much so that we've almost made those synonymous terms. And listen, I've done it myself at times. I've, I, I've said stewardship when I was talking about tithing, and I've, I've, made it, I've made that mistake as well because you need to hear me this morning. Stewardship goes a lot further than just tithing. It's deeper than just do I give my tithe to the Lord. For some of you, you may not understand tithing. Let me take a moment to explain that. Tithing is a principle we find in the Bible. It's giving our first 10% to the Lord. He calls for that. He he commands that. And we see this throughout the Bible. Matter of fact, in Genesis 14, listen, there's no scriptures on the the wall today. You're going to have to have your Bibles. It's... If you were in kids' church, if you remember the old sword drills, anybody ever grow up in kids' church, remember? That's what it's going to be like today. We're going to be all over the place today. So, uh, so get your Bible out, get ready, because Genesis 14, we see that, that Abraham gave a 10% tithe. He gave a tithe to King Melchizedek even before the law was ever given. He was wanting to bless and, and worship and praise the Lord, and so he gave a tithe of everything he owned to King Melchizedek. Then we see in Leviticus chapter 27, when the law comes around, that God commands this. He says this in verse 30 of 27. He says, every tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the trees, is the Lord's. It is holy to the Lord. And so that word tithe, it's not a fancy word. It just means 10%. That's all it means. It literally means 10%. And this concept that predated the law, we now see in the law. And this is an interesting description in Leviticus 27. Because it doesn't say give God some of what you have. It says give God what is already his. And there's there's a distinction there. Our tithe belongs to the Lord. And now here's where we differ. Here's where people start to break apart. Because some people argue, well, tithing was in the Old Testament. We don't have to do that anymore. It, it's an Old Testament concept. We, we're not under that anymore. And, and they say that the law was fulfilled by Jesus, so we don't have to do that. But remember, the grace we found in Jesus Christ, it didn't lower the bar of expectation for us. Because here's the truth. The bar was never low to begin with. The law was given to show the condition of our heart. We're the ones who made it about everything else. We're the ones. The Israelites were the ones who made it about outward conforming and making sure I followed the list of do's and don'ts. They're the ones. We are the ones who made it that. But it's always been about the heart. And Jesus tells us this. In Matthew 5 through 7, on the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus talks about the fact that these Old Testament laws were really about the heart. 
he talks about things like murder, and he says, you shall not murder. And he clarifies what that means. He says, listen, if you carry anger in your heart for somebody, he said, you're under the same judgment as if you'd murdered them. Why would he lift up all these other Old Testament laws and then say, but that tithing thing doesn't matter anymore? He wouldn't. And we see it in Matthew chapter 23. In Matthew 23, verse 23, he says, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Listen, he says, For you tithe mint and dill and cumin and have neglected the weightier matters of the law, justice and mercy and faithfulness. He said, These, listen, these you ought to have done without neglecting the others. Jesus says, listen to me. He says, don't stop tithing. That's good. He says, but what I want you to add to that is faithfulness and justice and mercy. He says, what I want you to add to that is the condition of your heart. And so tithing is relevant and it's important in the life of a believer. It really is foundational to our ability to be obedient because God commanded it. We have to decide what we're going to do with it. It's foundational to our ability to be a good steward because, let's face it, I can't be a good steward of what God has given me until I learn to be obedient. This is why we've made these two terms so synonymous with each other because I have to be obedient in order to tithe. Listen, tithing is not about my generosity. Tithing is about my obedience. Will I do what God told me to do? And here's what we get. We pray and we pray and we pray and we say, Lord, I want you, why aren't you doing this and why aren't you doing that? And Lord, why will, show me this and show me that. And the Lord's saying, I've already showed you stuff. I want you to start there and I'll work you through this. Because here's what we need to understand. Do you realize that every time you tithe, it's an act of worship? When they brought their tithe, it was an act of worship. It wasn't just given because it's a monthly bill. No. It's not a monthly bill. This is the way it is even for us as a church. The tithe of tithe that we give to the state and to the international offices, that's not a, that's not a dues we pay to be part of the church of God. It's a tithe of the tithe. We give that because God has blessed us and we're going to practice this principle of tithing at a corporate level because God is faithful when we tithe. Because every time we tithe, it's an act of worship. You're writing out a check or you're putting it online or you're submitting that cash or you're putting it in an envelope. and you, That is a moment where you are worshiping the Lord. When you stroke that check, it is a moment of worship to the Lord that says, Lord, I trust you. It may have happened at your desk at home, but it's a moment where you've said, Lord, I, by the fact that I'm doing this, I trust in you that you are faithful. I trust in you that your word is true. And so every time we do it, it's worship. But that's only part of the story. That's, that's only part of what stewardship really is. Because here's what it is. Stewardship is understanding that everything, and I mean everything. Everyone say everything. everything. You know what that word means? Everything. Right? Everything I have belongs to the Lord. Not just 10% of it. All of it. Everything I have. That's the heart of stewardship. The heart of stewardship is coming to an understanding that God owns it all. And if you don't believe me, let's take a little trip through the Bible. Ready? Exodus 19.5. He he's talking to Moses and he says, the whole earth is mine. In Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 14, he says this. He says, to the Lord your God belong the heavens, even the highest heavens, the earth and everything in it. Job 41, 11. God's talking with Job. Remember Job? He's the one who went through a tough time and he's questioning God. And God starts saying, where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? And he's talking to Job. He says, everything under heaven belongs to me. In Psalm 24, verse 1, David says, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. The world and all who live in it belong to the Lord. Haggai chapter 2, verse 8. I love this one. He's talking about the temple. He, he told the people to build the temple. And God encourages them with these words. He says, the silver is mine and the gold is mine, declares the Lord Almighty. But listen to me. This isn't just in a general sense. Do you know that as a believer, you belong to the Lord today? Yeah. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 19 through 20 says this. He says, do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit? Who is in you? You, who you 
have received from God. He says, you are not your own. You were bought with a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. Even our time on this earth belongs to the Lord. Did you know that? Yes. Psalm 139, verse 16 says, Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Church, if you, think, if you wonder if God cares about you, you need to go read Psalm 139, verse 16 again. Because Psalm 139, verse 16, he's writing to God and he's saying, God, you saw me before I was unformed. Before my parents even knew I was around, you knew I was around. Before my parents knew I was going to be their child, you knew I was going to be their child. Before my unformed body was there, you saw every day that was ordained for me. And I love this because he says, before any of them came to be. I'm here to tell you today, don't let the enemy lie to you. You have a purpose and you have a future because God has ordained you to have a hope and a future today. But even our talents and abilities, God owns those too. Because 1 Corinthians 12, 11 says this, and talking about the spiritual gifts given to each of us from the Holy Spirit, Paul says, all these are the work of one in the same spirit, and he distributes to each one just as he determines. As he determines, he gives our spiritual gifts. You and I don't even have the talents and abilities we think we have, had it not been for God. Right? He gave us everything. Do you get the sense that God really owns it all? In 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10, we're encouraged with these words. He says, each of you should use whatever gift you've received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. God's grace is not just a get-out-of-jail-free card. God's grace is over our lives in various forms. God's grace shows up in different ways at different times in our life. And he says, and I've given you everything you need. I've given you the time you need. I've given you the talents you need. I've given you the resources you need. He says, and so I want you to be a good steward of all of it. And when we're faithful stewards of what God has given us, whether it is my time, whether it is my talent, whether it is my resources, when I, when I do that, what I'm doing is I'm honoring and worshiping God in that moment. But I'm also getting to serve others because God says, I'm going to use that in 1 Peter 4. He says, use your gifts to serve others. Use them to serve others. Because when I do it, it helps me to love God because I'm demonstrating my love for the Lord as I use my time. Listen, I've told you this. Nobody has time. Listen, you talk to anybody, they say, yeah, I'm busy. Yeah, we all are. But we make time. It's why I always tell you, I always have time for you. If you call and need prayer, I always have time for you. If you're in the hospital and you need me, I'm always there for you. I always have time. Why? Because we make time. Right? We use the time that God has given us. And we use it wisely. We take the time that God has given us and says, you know what? I'm going to use it to serve somebody else. I'm going to use it to grow in my faith. I'm going to use it for God's glory in this moment. And so using our talents this way helps us to love God with all we have. But it also helps us to love others with that same kind of passion. Because until I become a good steward of the time, talent, and resources, I'm never going to look around me to see the needs around me. I'm never going to look around me to see the brokenness of my coworkers and my family members. I'll just blow right past them because I don't have time for that right now. But I'll slow down when I become a good steward. And I'll start looking around me at what God is doing and where God has strategically placed me today to be able to make a difference for his kingdom. I told you this a couple weeks ago. When we look around this room, there's empty chairs. There's 284 chairs in this auditorium today in this sanctuary today everyone that's empty represents somebody who's not hearing the gospel message and yet we walk by people every single day who are broken and hurting and they need hope and they need help and God's looking at his people saying when are you going to have the time when are you going to do it I, I, Pastor Tracy and I talk about this all the time we always say this especially in ministry we always say this, if I could just get through this week I'll be okay Right? If I could just get past this event, whew, 
then I'll be okay. And you know what we find is when we get past that event, you know what else is there? Something else, right? You know it's the same as you, right? If I could just get to this vacation, everything will be all right, right? And you come back from vacation, what do you say? Why did I take a vacation, right? Why? Because we get so busy, right? We, under, we need to understand that I've got to be a good steward of what God has given me. So how do we do this? How do we become a good steward of what God has given to us? How do we steward well the time, talent, and resources that God has given to us? And we do it by remembering two, per, two principles, two principles that will help us this morning. Principle number one is this, God is the owner. I've got to get this in my heart. I've got to get this in my life. You've got to get this in your heart, and you've got to get this in your life. God owns it all. Say that with me. God owns it all. Say it one more time. God owns it all. He owns it all. I've got to remember that because that's where my stumbling block comes when I forget that God owns it all. If we want to be faithful stewards, then I have to remember that because when I remember that, here's what I remember. I don't have to create it. I just have to manage it. He's already given me the time. I just got to manage it well. He's already given me the talent. I just got to manage it well. He's already given me the resources. I've just got to manage it well. I was thinking about this when I was putting this together. I was thinking when, when our family was young, we took all our kids to Disney one time. And it was a great trip. We'd been there a couple times. But this particular trip, we were able to fly down and stay in one of the resorts. Now, this is when my kids were little, so we didn't have to pay as much for them at that time. So we fly down, and here was the coolest part. When we get there, there were Disney staff people waiting for us in the, in the airport. They're welcoming us in. They take our luggage. They, they welcome us to the shuttle. They put us on the shuttle. And I loved it because I never had to touch my luggage, ever. They took my luggage from the airplane. They got it onto the shuttle. They took it to the hotel. They put it in my room. All I had to do was walk in with my family, check in, and when we got to go to the park, and when we got back, our bags and everything were just in our room. And here's the cool part, and here's the illustration for us. I never gave up ownership of my luggage, right? They didn't just start walking around the park wearing all my stuff and <laughs> selling off anything they didn't want of mine, right? They didn't, they didn't say, boy, this is nice luggage. Let's sell this. No, because it belonged to me, right? I was the owner. They were just stewarding what I'd given to them. I placed something in their hands, but I placed something in their hands with an expectation. I placed something in their hands with an expectation. You're going to give this back to me. You're going to do something. You're going to take care of this. You're, going to, you're not going to just throw it out the window. You're going, to, you're going to give this to me. You're not going to drag it up the stairs. You're going to treat it well. You're going to show respect to this. You're going to take time with this. You're going, to, you're going to honor this. And then you're going to place it in my room. And I'm going to see it again. Can I tell you, God does the same thing with us. He owns it all. And he gives it to us. And says, here, I'll be back for it. Take what you need. I'll be back for it. But every time he does, he does it with an expectation. We see it in these scriptures that we just read. We know from those scriptures he owns it all. But he's placed it in our hands for us to manage it well. For example, if you look at Haggai chapter 2. Haggai chapter 2, God had been telling him, build the temple. He said the temple had been destroyed. The people have started coming back into Jerusalem. He says, I want you to rebuild the temple that was there before. And I love it because in that passage, he says, and don't worry about it. If you'll do what I've asked you to do, I'll take care of everything. He says, and just to let you know why you can trust me, I own all the silver and I own all the gold. So if you'll do what I ask you to do, I'll make the way for you to do it. If you do what I've asked you to do, it'll already be waiting for you when you need it. Church, the same is true in all the other passages we read. He gave it with an expectation. He's given us with an expectation. What are you going to do with it? He doesn't just tell us, I own it all. So that He didn't tell him, listen, I own all the silver and all the gold, so you're going to be filthy rich. No. He told him that to remind him, I'm going to take care of you. 
Can I tell you, God doesn't tell us he owns it all so that he can brag and put us in our spot. Right? Come on, you know that. You know, we've, we've all been put in our spot, right? You know, that, that person that has the car that's just a little better than ours and they let us know that their car is just a little better than ours. We've all been put in our spot, right? When our kids were in daycare, we, Pastor Tracy tried to make a play date with one of the kids. And she was like, oh, we can't do that. Because she drove a PT Cruiser, and we just had a minivan. Go look up PT Cruiser. It's not around anymore. But if you look it up, that was the hot thing in the moment. You, you, they were above the minivan crowd now. But listen to me. We've all been put in our spot. God wasn't doing that to put us in our place. He doesn't tell us that. He doesn't give us that in his word to put us in our place. He does it to say, listen, I've given you time. And I've given you talent. And I've given you resources. And if you need more, I'll give it to you. But if you will use it for my glory, I will take care of you. If you will use it the way I've given it to you, if you will do what I've expected of you, I will give you everything you ever need. I'll give you all that you need. You won't have to lack for anything. You won't need for anything in your life. And listen to me, church. This is not a get-rich-quit sermon. This is a faithfulness sermon. This is a sermon that says, I need to look at my bank account and see where I'm spending my money and see if it honors God. I need to look at my time and say, how does it honor God? I need to look at my talents and say, how does it honor God? There's things that are needed in God's kingdom, and he's placed you right in position for it. And we sit there with all of our talent and all of our ability and say, ah, someone else will do it. And God has given it to us. God has given it to us. Because listen to me, we're always going to struggle if we don't get the ownership issue right. Because if we don't get the ownership issue right, I'm always going to struggle and fight against God over what I have. Because, see, we get in our mind that the time I have and the talent I have and the resources I have, that's because I made it happen. I'm a self-made man, right? I'm a self-made person. How many times have we heard, I'm a self-made person? We haven't made anything. Right? God has given it to us because he owns it all. But if I believe I'm the owner, I'm always going to struggle with God. And I'm always going to fight with God. Because when God says, I want you to take the time to do that, we're going to look at God and say, I don't have time for that. When he says, I want you to give to that mission project, you're going to say, I, I don't have, I, we don't have the money for that. Be faithful to what God has given you. I remember one time we were, I've told you about how poor we were when we got married and couldn't afford to live for free. We're living in my parents' basement for free and still couldn't afford it. Missionary came along and said, I knew it was Mission Sunday. If you've been in the church, how many of you know what, you, you've been around for mission services. We, we have them here, it's okay. So that missionary came around and I knew, I'd been around church long enough. I said, okay, I can kind of mentally check out of this sermon because this isn't for me, I'm not giving them the offering. Pastor Tracy sitting beside me, and she got all excited. And she said, now think about that. We had tried to qualify for a house. We were having our children, starting to have our family. We were starting to expand. We're like, all right, we got we to figure this out. We had tried to qualify for a house, and we got denied. We couldn't qualify. So we're sitting in this service, and Pastor Tracy leans over to me, and she says, I think we should give $5 a month to this mission project. Two things went through my head. First off, I don't have $5 to give to this mission project. But then the second thing that went in my mind was, I'm a good church kid. So if it's $5, we should give 20 And she said, no, no, God didn't tell me that. God told me to give $5. And so I said, okay. So we committed to give it. And I'm here to tell you, it was a sacrifice to say we'd give $5. A couple months go by. We try to pre-qualify again. Nothing has changed in our situation. We pre-qualified like that and got a house. I'm here to tell you the only thing I can explain is that God was faithful to his promise. All I know to explain it is is somebody heard the voice of God in a moment that said, I want you to do something with the resources I've given you. 
Don't worry about if you can afford it. Don't worry about if you have it. I'm just asking you to give it. And if you give it, I'll take care of everything else. Now, church, that's something you've got to learn on your own. That's, that's why tithing is such a critical principle to this. Because I'm here to tell you, when you start tithing, it's hard. It's not easy. When you give that check and it's like, oh, I, whoa, I could have done that. But yet God shows up in ways that are unimaginable in your life. And the only explanation you have is I have been faithful to God and God is being faithful to me. This is what stewardship is all about. It's remembering that he owns it all and I'm just taking care of it. But here's the second principle. The second principle is this. I have a responsibility. I have to do something with what he gave me. He doesn't just give it to me and say, go do whatever you want. He gives it to me and says, I own it. I need you to take care of it. I own it. I need you to honor it. I own it, but I'm placing it in your hands. Will you treat it well? We've got to remember that I, he owns it all, but I have a responsibility to manage it. It's the difference between an owner and a manager. The owner owns it all. The manager has to take care of it. But the manager doesn't get to decide what to do with it. The manager doesn't say, you know what, I think I'll just sell off a few things today. No, they don't have that authority. They have to manage what was given to them for the benefit of the owner. The benefit goes back to the owner. And we see this principle in the kingdom of God. In Matthew chapter 25. You can turn with me here. Matthew chapter 25. Jesus is teaching his disciples the principles of the kingdom of God in this passage. So he's telling several different stories, several different parables. One of the parables starts like this in verse 14. It says, for it, talking about the kingdom of heaven. It says, it'll be like a man going on a journey who calls his servants and entrusted to them his property. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to another one. And I love this line, to each according to his ability. God is not going to give you more than you can handle, but he's going to give you what you can manage. Then he went away. A talent, we don't really know what that talent is. It's really just a measurement. It was a, it was a way of measuring things in that day. I read in one place where a talent of silver was uh, close to 100 pounds. A talent of gold was close to 200 pounds. We, we don't really know what he gave them, but we know the weight of what he gave them, right? So he gave them five talents, and he gave them two talents, and he gave them one talent. He gave them the weight of what that was, but we don't know what it is. Two of those servants who had the ability to manage it well, they had more. They took it, and they invested it. They had five and two, and they took that property, and they doubled what they were given. The other servant went and hid the money and did nothing with it. Verse 19 of Matthew 29, 25 says this. It says, now after a long time, now think about this. We're all good at managing what God gives us for the short time. We're all good at doing what God tells us to do today. It's tomorrow we have to worry about. It's Tuesday morning at work we've got to worry about. Yeah, we're all good at, okay, Sunday afternoon, man, I, I had a great service. Boy, I'm ready to go. Let's do this. I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that for the Lord. It's for the long term. He says, now after a long time, the master of those servants came, and he settled accounts with them because they were responsible to that. And it's important to remember because they didn't own that property. They had to manage the property. They had the responsibility for it. And two of those servants, the one who had five and the one who had two, they doubled what they had. They had ended with ten and they ended with four. Here's what I love about the story. They didn't say, you know what, master? Man, I did so good. I took that five you gave me and I made it eight. Or I made it ten. Here's eight of it. I'll just keep two back for myself. I put a lot of work into that. I'll keep two back for myself. No. Oh. They said, here, it all belongs to you. You gave me the original, 
and I increased it with what you gave me, but all of it still belongs to you, so here it is. I give it back to you. And so he gives back 10, and he gives back 4. And here's what I also love about this. He didn't give back. The one who gave back 4 didn't say, man, why didn't I give back 10? Man, I wish I'd have had 10 to give you back. No. He said, you gave me. I was faithful. Here, it's yours. Give, I give it back. But both of those servants heard the same reward. Both of those servants here, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. Both of them got to receive the same reward. Because the master didn't look at her and say, why didn't you give me 10? He said, look at what you did with what I gave you. Look at how you used it. Man, I'm so proud of you. Look at what you did. Man, I'll give you more next time. Because look how faithful you've been. The one who hid his money faced punishment. And what he was given was even taken away from him. Because again, it wasn't his. And here's what we got to understand. God's not expecting you to do what somebody else can do. God's not looking at you saying, why didn't you do what they did? He's not looking at you doing that. He's looking at you saying, I've entrusted to you the gifts I've given you. The time and the talent and the resources. He says, just use it. Don't worry about everybody else. Don't worry about what they're doing. Just be faithful with what God has given you. Praise team, would you come up? Prayer team, would you come and get ready? Stand across the front. As we get ready to close today, what if God called you to give an account? It's his. What if he called you to give an account this morning? What would the record say about how you've used what you've been given? What would the record say about how you're using the time he's given you? What would the record say about the talent he's given to you? What would the record say about the resources that he's entrusted to you? I'm not asking you that to guilt you, and I'm not asking that to put you to shame, and I'm not taking up another offering at the end of this service. I'm asking you that today because we've got to get this principle right in our hearts and in our lives. We've got to get this principle and an understanding that I have to be a good steward of what God has given to me. He's entrusted it to me. I've got to manage it well, what he's done for me. And would that record show that I truly believe that? If it would, I'm here to tell you, just keep doing it. Just keep being faithful. Maybe your blessing hasn't come yet. Just keep being faithful. He's going to come one day and he's going to reconcile accounts with you. And he'll pour out the blessing that you need. Here's what I'd also encourage you to do. Go back and look at your life. Because I would bet that there have been some blessings you've missed. Some answered prayers that you missed over because you just missed it. God is always faithful. God is always true. And God is always with us. This is important. This is, you say, well, pastor, why do we need this as a church? Because we'll never be good stewards as a church until we're good stewards individually. But when we're stewards, good stewards individually, then we look across and say, look at what God has given us. Look at what God has entrusted to us. Look at the talents and the time and the resources that God has given to us. How do we use it for his kingdom? How do we use it to make this a safe place? How do we use it to love God? How do we use it to love others? And we start to look different at everything we do and say, I want to be a good steward of what God has given to me today. And so I want to encourage you today, be faithful. Be faithful to the Lord. Build a culture of stewardship in your own life. And we're going to build it in our church so that we can glorify God and serve others. Because Peter tells us, just use the gifts you've given. Use them for, you just use them. Use them to serve one another. Use them to take care of one another. Because in that, God is glorified. Because Jesus said, this is how you'll know my, you're my disciples. 
if you have love one for another. It's how we show what God is doing in our lives. So let's glorify God together. Let's be good stewards of what God has given to us. Would you stand with me? Lord, I love and praise you today. Lord, I honor you today. Be with us in these last few moments. Let your Holy Spirit speak into our lives. Touch our hearts and lives. Here's how I want to close. If you need salvation this morning, I want to encourage you to come find one of these prayer team workers and let them pray with you. Let them lead you to the Lord this morning. They're not here to judge you. They're not here to condemn you. They're here to pray with you and rejoice with you. Because it's the greatest thing we can ever do. God has given us our life. The greatest thing we could ever do is give it back to him. And say, Lord, I surrender it all to you today. I need you to be my Lord and Savior. And so if you need to do that today, come find one of these prayer team workers. If you're just in a season where you just need somebody to pray with you, come pray with them. Again, they're not going to dig into all your deep, dark secrets. They're just going to bind their faith with you today. But here's how I want to close this morning. If you would say, Pastor, I want to be a good steward of what God has given to me. Would you join me in the altar this morning? As we worship this morning, I want to invite you to come and give your talents back to the Lord. Give your time back to the Lord. Give your resources back to the Lord. You may say, well, Pastor, I already tithe. I don't need to do that. It's a condition of my heart that says, Lord, I give you everything. Not just my first 10%. What do you want me to do with the rest of it? What do you want me to do with my life? What do you want me to do with the time that you've given me? What do you want me to do with the talent that you've entrusted to me? How do you want me to use it today, Lord? And so as we pray this morning, this isn't a prayer saying, who wants to start tithing? This is a prayer that says, who wants to be a good steward of what God has given me? And I'm here to tell you, church, I'm the first one to step forward and say, Lord, I want to be that. I want to be a good steward for you today. Would you join me in the altar this morning? Let's give ourselves to the Lord today. Let's worship today. Come and be with the prayer team. Let them pray for you. Don't just stand here. Give your heart to the Lord and surrender it all. Let's worship him together today. For a thousand generations falling down to worship, to sing the song of ages to the Lamb. Oh, and all who've gone before us and all who will believe will sing the song of ages to the Lamb. Oh, cause your name is the highest, your name is the greatest, your name all oh, stands above them all, all thrones and dominions. Your name stands above them all, and the angels cry, Holy, all creation cries, Holy, you are lifted high, Holy, Holy for Oh, and if you've been redeemed, oh, sing the song forever to the Lamb. Oh, yes, and if you walk in freedom, oh, and if you bear his name, oh, sing the song forever to the Lamb. Oh, yes, we will, we'll sing the song forever.
Let your name, yes, it stands above them all. All thrones, all thrones, and dominions, all powers and positions. Your name, yes, it does stand above them all. And the angels cry, holy, all creation cries, yes, it does. to be a good witness to you. Show us, Lord. Show us how to do it. Let us help one another come along and walk this journey so that we walk it out in glory and honor, that we may serve one another with what you've gifted to us. Because, Lord, we trust you. Lord, we believe you today that you own it all. And so, Lord, help us to be responsible. Lord, we need your Holy Spirit. We need your Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us. We need your Holy Spirit to teach us, to show us, to put that tug on our heart at just the right moment, to give more, to give of ourselves, to step outside of that circle and go speak to that new person. Lord, give us the courage in those moments to step out, to make a difference, so that we may be found to be good stewards, that we may be found to hear those words, well done, my good and faithful servant, that someday, whether through the rapture or through natural causes, when we enter the gates of heaven, you will welcome us in and wrap your arms around us and say, my child, you have done well. Lord, that's, that's what we long for. Help us to be good stewards of what you've given to us. Help us to be good stewards as a church, to trust in you, to walk with you, and to give of ourselves for your kingdom, that your name would be lifted high. I praise you and I honor you today. I give every, every person that's here, Lord, we commit ourselves to you today. We submit ourselves wholly and completely to you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. If you believe that this morning, would you give the Lord a clap offering of praise? Lord, we praise you and we thank you. Lord, we honor you today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. But listen, it's not over yet. We still get to baptize two people. Amen, amen. Listen, you may be seated for just a moment. I'm going to ask those who are being baptized if you would go and get ready to be baptized. Go and get ready to baptize if you're one of the pastors who are baptizing. This is an exciting day as we get to celebrate in the Lord today. While they're getting ready, let me just share a few things with you. Just a couple updates I want to give to you this morning. Because I know after baptism you're not going to listen, so. You're going to be too busy celebrating and taking pictures, so. 
While they're getting ready, I'm going to take a moment. This Saturday, we have men's cookout. It's going to be a great time. We're going to have a fire pit and cornhole, and I'm sure somewhere along the line there'll be some competition of some sort. Can't put too many guys together without there being one. So come out and have a great time with us. Eat together. We're going to have a great afternoon. Uh, sign up so we know how to plan for it. There's been quite a few sign up. There's a sheet underneath. So if you get there and there's no, no, no names available, we've got plenty. Just turn it over and sign up. We, we want you here with us today. Invite somebody to come be with us for it next week. If you are willing to help, we would love to help setting up. They're going to start setting up about 4 o'clock, so if you want to help do that, just mark that on your sign-up sheet. When you sign up, or if you've already signed up, just go back and put, I'll help, I'll help set up. Just write set up. Here's all I got. You just put a mark on the paper, they'll call you, I promise. It's going to be a great time. Two weeks from now, we've got Friendsgiving coming up. Woo! November 3rd, we've got Friendsgiving coming up. Make sure you sign up in the back to be a part of that. We want you to bring something to share with everybody. Take some invite cards. The greeters are going to have invite cards as you leave today. Take them. Here's what I know. They're not going to do any good sitting on the counter in our church. We need to take them out and give them to the community so we can invite people. Invite your family and friends to come. Invite the unchurched to be with us that day. If, if Come be a part of it. It's going to be a great day. Dress casual that day. We're going to have a meal together after church. We're going to do it right here in the sanctuary, just like we did for the joint service. But dress casual. We're going to have inflatables and games and all kinds of stuff outside. So spend the afternoon. We're going to spend the afternoon with the church family, and it's going to be fun. We're also going to do some giveaways. We always like doing this at some of these big events. We've got some giveaways we're going to do. Everybody in the room will get a ticket, so you can win gift cards of $25 and $50. We've got a couple of those we're going to give away each. And then we got a grand prize of a $100 gift card. That's enough to go eat. That's nice. $50, you got to decide which of your family's going with you to eat. $100, you might be able to take them all. So, so come out and be a part of it. All you got to do is be in the room. We'll give out tickets. And uh, if you bring a guest, if you bring visitors that day, if you bring, we're going to give you an extra ticket. So if you bring somebody, I'll let you decide whether you split it with them if you win. But invite them to come. Kids Church is going to be giving away things that day as well. They're going to be doing drawings and giveaways, and it's going to be a lot of fun. For the meal, I just need to note, uh, please, we do have allergies, so please no raw onions. We do have an allergy to that, so whatever you're making, please just include no raw onions, and we'll be good that day. The Christmas play is coming up, so make sure you sign up for that. December 22nd. Again, we're going to have a meal because, listen, we can't get together without eating. So we're going to have a meal together. We're going to have a great play. So there's still ways to help. So make sure you sign up for that. I know it seems so far away, but listen to me. We're almost in November, so it's right around the corner. So come out and be a part of that. Pizza with the pastors, we're not going to have it in November. So if you get your card, we will not have it in November because we're going to be having Friendsgiving. Come back for the December one. We're going to have a great time. We'll be a part of that, and it'll be a great time to do that. We want you to be a part of it. Sign up so we can plan for that. We have pizza. That's why it's called Pizza with the Pastors. So, uh, so we want to make sure we have enough for you that day. If you filled out your Connect card and didn't get to turn it in, turn it in at either one of the side doors. Uh, right outside is a black box on the wall. They can take it. Any of the greeters can take it. We'd love to just celebrate with you and welcome you today. If you did not get a box and you're new, you're saying, well, Pastor, I'm new. I don't even know what you're talking about. That's okay. We've got somebody for that, too. His name is Mike Falkingham. He's standing right back there at the table uh, in the back of the sanctuary. He's got boxes for you. He'll be more than happy to greet you and welcome you and give you a box. One last announcement before we do baptism. I'm going to ask Nikki and Damon if you would come up here for me, if you would. They're getting ready to help us with the ministry. Come on. So we've been talking with Nikki and Damon about helping us with the young adult in our church. So they've been planning and putting things together for the age group of 18 to 25 year olds. And so I want to personally and publicly thank you both for stepping in and taking this on. 
we're getting together, we're talking about 2025, because listen, we've got so much going on with 24. We're going to look at 2025 to start this up. Uh, so be looking for some things coming up at the beginning of the year as we start advertising and planning for some activities and events for, for that age group, because it's going to be a great time to get them together. Because uh, here's what I know. We looked at this the other day. We have, what, about 17? We have about 17 young adults in our church that fit that age group. And so we want to celebrate that and get them together and help them get to know one another and know that they have a church family that loves them. And so I want to take a moment to pray over Nikki and Damon as they start to plan this because here's what we know. God has a purpose for this. We're not just doing it to do another activity or do another event. God has a purpose for this. And God has a purpose for what he wants to do in these, these young people of our church. He has a place for you. If you are a young person, if you fit in that age group, you need to hear me. This is your church. It's not your church someday. It's your church today. The truth is, all you little kids sitting down here on the front row from Kids Church, they came in to watch baptism with us. You are not the church of tomorrow. This is your church today. We love you and we're here for you. We love our families in this church, and so I want to pray over them as they are in their planning phase of this. Can we pray over them today? Lord, I love and thank you. Thank you for Nikki and Damon. I thank you for their heart for you and their heart for others as they reach out to show your love to this age group. Lord, I ask you to give them wisdom and guidance, and Lord, I ask you to give them favor. As they make their plans, I ask you to just give them the desires of their heart to see this age group just grow and strengthen together. And we worship you and we praise you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you so much, Nikki. I appreciate you doing this. Appreciate you. Amen. Give them one more hand as they go down. All right. It is time. I want us to just sing that chorus together as we get ready to prepare our hearts for this celebration. Can we worship and pray just for a moment? Let's worship him just for a moment. Oh, Sing this. now you pick me up. You turn me around. Oh, you place my feet on solid ground. I thank the master. I thank the savior because you healed my heart and you changed my name and forever free. I'm not the same. I thank the master. I thank the savior. You pick you pick me up, yes, and turn me around. You place my feet on solid ground. I thank the master, yeah, I thank the savior. Because you healed my heart and you changed my name. Yes, forever free, I'm not the same. I thank the master, I thank the savior. is all about. Amen. 
It's declaring that I am free. Here's what we believe. This water is not going to save anybody. I can dunk you as many times as you want, and it's not going to save you one bit. But the blood of Jesus Christ sets us free. You say, well, then, Pastor, why does this matter? This is a moment of testimony. This is a moment where somebody declares, I am dead to my sin, and I am alive in Christ. Who I was yesterday is not who I am today. And they declare with everything they have in them, I am free. Hell lost another one. And I believe that with everything I have in me. God is on the move in our families. God is on the move in our loved ones. And God is not done yet. This is just the beginning. So Pastor Mark, would you lead us? something prayer works Amen. don't stop praying Amen. for your family members Amen. because he'll move the Holy Spirit will move yes. Amen. when you least expect it yes. Veronica have you accepted Jesus into your heart as your personal savior yes. say a little louder a little louder <laughs> yes. by your confession of faith in Jesus Christ. I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And the Son This is Zoe. Okay, Zoe's wanted to do this for a long time. She has been anticipating every time we have it, but we have her dad here with us today, too. We waited for dad. Mom and dad, the job you've done with Zoe. We're just here to add flavor to Zoe's life as the church. It's the parents that start pouring in and watching over and opening that Bible for them when they're little and watching and hearing it goes into her mind and then she comes to kids church and we have amazing thank you for pouring into her because you're watching the fruit of amazing parents an awesome church a pastor who believes in children or are here and now not wait till you get to your 18 Zoe I am so proud of the woman of God you're becoming and your pastor, your directors, your children's directors, they're sitting in there, they're saying the same thing. Mom and dad and your siblings, they're crying because, man, hell lost another Amen. one. Amen. So if you can extend your hands forward, I'm going to pray over Zoe. Because our kids in schools, they're mighty warriors because they have a lot to defend from. But man, did they have the greatest mission field of all time. So this warrior needs your prayers this morning. Dear Heavenly Father God, I thank you and I praise you for your child that you entrusted us. God, we talked about stewardship yesterday. And I stand with one of your gifts today, Lord Jesus, and we're giving her back to you. God, what has happened to her in her young life. 
how she has poured herself out, how she has taken in the word, and she has hidden it in her heart, Lord Jesus. And we're about to see the beginning of what you're going to do in and through her, Father God. But we're asking for a hedge of protection over her and around her. We're asking for discernment and wisdom and peace that transcends all understanding. And Satan, I tell you right now today, she is not yours. She is a child of God. She stands in this holy water to dedicate and announce to the public that she is a child of God. And she is going to raise up and she's going to be one of your biggest foe and adversary. You have no authority over Zoe. Get out and stay out in the name of Jesus. And God, we thank you for what you're going to do. We thank you for your protection, God. And we put Zoe into your hands today. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. So, Zoe, do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? You do want to affirm? Good. I was going to hold your little nose. There we go. I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Church, thank you for being a part of this. Thank you for staying and celebrating with these two. Here's what I would challenge you to do. After they get dressed, after they get dried, find them. Congratulate them. This is a huge day for them and their family. We're going to celebrate this. God bless you. Lord, I pray a blessing over every person that's here. As we leave this place, help us to grow stronger in you. Help us to stand strong. Help us to know that we are free today. And we worship you, we rejoice in you, and we stand as your people. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much.